Hello, this is David E. Hilster. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Today we're going to talk about something that comes in the news pretty often, and that's general relativity, Einstein's theory of relativity, where light is bent by gravity. It's a wonderful idea and all that, but there's some big problem with it. It's wrong but we keep hearing about it and it's keep it keeps on being sold to us through mass media and the science for why Einstein makes money now what we know about Einstein and why he's being pushed today is because there's this big series very expensive Hollywood series on Einstein on Nat Geo Ron Howard everybody's in and they are on this campaign to show scientists are great people and they are smart and that we should be like scientists and climate change those people who are against climate change are in real trouble. So they're making science look like it's not worth anything. So we're going to push this guy, this Einstein guy. I'm not here to talk about whether climate change is right or wrong or real or not. That's not my job. job. My job here is to talk about how people in the mainstream and mainstream physics push wrong ideas and don't look at alternatives and this is how they sell it. So we have this one CBS uh, CBS News article. I've changed it to the one that doesn't have all the graphics on. I tried that one and it blew up in my face. So they have a nice way of just looking at it in browsers. And that's where we're going to look. How the total solar eclipse helped prove Einstein right. There's a solar eclipse coming August 21st on my father's birthday here across the United States. And so it's sort of a topical thing. And they're talking about Newton versus Einstein and that is I, Newton just talked about gravity. He didn't talk about gravity bending light. And of course, the big time, what made Einstein famous was this eclipse, this picture that you see right here. That launched him into superstardom because in Brazil, Eddington, a, a, a scientist at the time, astronomer at the time from the UK, went down to Brazil to see this eclipse to try to measure the little dots. You can probably see them right there. There's some little dots of stars, and they're going to say those stars are going to be in a different position than they're supposed to be because the starlight is passing. Uh, uh, a body in space, and bodies in space bend space-time, whatever the that is. Of course, they never tell you. And then because it's bending, we are we can show that Einstein's uh, idea that light bends space, They he actually talks about it. It's outlandish. Let's see if I can find that. Outlandish. Uh, there it is. Um, however, British astronomers, uh, British astronomer Sir Eddington uh, was paying attention, was paying attention to Einstein's outlandish, but powerful new ideas. Look at the words they use. Outlandish. He's a rebel. He wasn't even a scientist. He was in the patent office. This is the rebel thinker coming out with powerful new ideas. So you can see it's just the way it, the way it works. And then they said, of course, then the uh, 1919 eclipse happened. Now, if you look at what they say after that, they'll say, although the warp space time deflected the starlight by minuscule amounts, of course, they're saying that. They don't even qualify that. Well, it's conjectured that warp, there's space-time that warps uh, light and therefore and in, uh, invisible to the naked eye. Of course, um, they're using photographs, so I'm not sure what they mean by that. And these photographs weren't exactly, and they're some, somewhat detailed, but you know, you can see this with the naked eye, I guess, but maybe, maybe uh, a few little teeny uh, dots uh, that were different in the analy analyzing, no big deal. The observations from Brazil and Principi, and Principi were analyzed by Einstein and they agreed and the general per relativity predictions agreed with observations. The warping of space-time by the sun's mass was real and Newton's inert space had been superseded by a new theory. Of course, what they don't tell you are some things, which is, in the 1980s, people started looking at the actual data from this experiment and realized, statistically, it did not show what it was supposed to. We'll talk about that in a second. But, of course, it says, since then, most important, the most important eclipse, uh, 98 years ago, general relativity has been tested for in many other ways. So, 
they're weaseling their way out of the actual fact that in the 1980s we have people talking about that in fact in nature was published that we really can't rely on the data that was there that really wasn't proof uh, they cherry picked the data they only picked certain ones and therefore blah 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 and then of course the moment they say that we get this guy coming back saying Arthur Arthur Eddington was innocent the trend for debunking science simple narratives can be overdone oh that's so oh I'm so mad it's overdone so this guy goes and talks about well these other people who were looking at the data and in fact this claim is of unfair data selection was made particularly strongly in a paper and by night in 1982 by philosophers blah 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 and their positions were publicized and blah 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 and Kinnick has examined these claims in detail the data for from Principe and Eddington himself to collect. We're poor, he's saying that, because of cloudy day. Oh, it's the cloudy day. That's it's not the theory, it's the cloudy day. Um, anyways, this guy goes on to, to talk about this, and basically he is trying to rebut the rebuttal that the data that launched Einstein into fame, in fact, was, was not good enough to prove relativity. But of course, we had that other article. And if you go, again, I'm teaching you how to read, folks, reading about the, this. And that is Einstein's general relativity in the nature was published, in fact, to say that that 1919 data was very suspect and probably cherry-picked and really wouldn't hold up today as proof of general relativity. But, of course, we can prove it in many other ways. But then you have my friend, Dr. Ed Dowdy, very good friend of mine, in my film, Einstein Wrong, who says, light bends because it passes through the crone of suns outside the crona there is no bending outside of the crona there should be because that's space time space time is this continuum and that means that there shouldn't be a place where all of a sudden it stops bending it should be slowly unbending but we don't find that why because light bends in mass light bends in water we all know that stick a stick in it looks like it's bent light bends in mass light does bend around coronas and you can measure that during eclipses but what you're measuring is not space-time the warping of space-time because space-time stupid concept even the words make no sense but again that's not this is Ed Dowdy saying a retired NASA scientist saying this okay folks what we've talked about today is looking at general relativity the eclipse from 1919 that launched Einstein into fame we're seeing Einstein being pushed down our throats again because oh he's a great scientist and this is counteract to the Trump oh everybody is non-scientific anymore there's no evolution uh, climate change is not real blah 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 so they're pushing this on it but they forget one thing they don't look to see if Einstein's right I hope this was enjoyable to you hopefully you learned a lot that's all for now remember don't take what anyone says on faith don't take what CBS News takes don't take what these writers from science magazines take don't take don't take what your professors tell you at, for, as true don't take it on faith remember what I say stay critical stay thinking I'm David D. Hilster your science therapist ciao for now <laughs>